All right. Welcome, 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 folks in the uh, Casto uh, land, the uh, Capital Area School District uh, Virtual College Fair here. Um, my name is Earl. I am the StriveScan facilitator this evening, and I am uh, happily joined by six schools, um, Cedar Crest University, uh, Drexel University, East Strasburg U, Mary Wood University, Mary Hearst University, and Penn State University. And uh, we will be hearing from them in that particular order. For folks on the other side um, who's watching, um, just so you know, in the chat, uh, I have put the order that these schools will present um, and they know um, what to do from there. So a few housekeeping items um, before I turn it over to our first presenter from, uh, from Faith from Cedar Crest, um, Faith from Cedar Crest. Um, so the Q&A function within your toolbar is active. Um, I want you to know that you can actually direct questions to the panelists or in general. That's completely up to uh, um, our audience um, how you wanna do that. Um, your camera and your microphone are off on the other side of the panel. So they do not hear you, they do not see you. Um, you are only hearing our panelists uh, present to you. Um, this is one of a few CASTA um, sessions uh, being presented uh, via StriveScan. So please do sign up for more uh, of these sessions if you are interested. We've got one more block after this one. If you're not signed up for that, you can just go ahead and get into our StriveScan link uh, as you see there at the bottom. And then the last piece of housekeeping item is, is that this is being recorded. So if you miss something, if you wanna rewind, if you wanna replay, um, you can always go to that um, link below and, um, and take another listen at what you're about to hear. So um, each school has got about six minutes to present. Um, I will be listening on the other side of this. Um, and um, we'll be moving things along. So I'm glad everyone is joining us. I see our participants moving in here and this is a great uh, great group of people. So um, without further ado, I'm passing the baton off to Faith um, from Cedar Crest. Thanks so much for joining us. Um, and Faith, um, off you go. Hello everyone, my name is Faith and I am one of the admissions counselors at Cedar Crest. Um, a little about Cedar Crest to begin, um, we are located in Allentown, Pennsylvania, um, and we are traditionally a women's college. Um, we do have men in some of our programs. We have um, our nursing program available um, as well as our nuclear medicine. Um, so those programs are co-ed. We were founded in 1867 and from then we have tried to really have a strong um, tradition of educating women leaders, um, which is definitely something that you'll see throughout um, Cedar Crest's mission. Um, and we have about 1500 undergrads. Um, you'll see from that we have very small class sizes um, and we definitely will have like a lot of one-on-one -on -one, um, interaction with your professors, um, which is something that we pride ourselves in. Some of our um, most important or our biggest um, programs are highlighted. So some of the most popular ones are highlighted on there. Um, we definitely have a very strong forensic science program and nursing program, um, and then also a lot of strong science programs as well. Um, one of the things about Cedar Crest is, that makes us unique is that we have research opportunities as early as um, a freshman in college. So right away, our students are getting to know their faculty members and are really um, getting research opportunities, which is um, great as well. Um, you can see some of our minors here. Um, you'll definitely see at Cedar Crest um, that it's a very interdisciplinary school. So a lot of students choose to co-major, have two majors. Um, they'll also add a minor or kind of, you can do any combination at Cedar Crest. You'll see people with completely unrelated things um, and they're just kind of following their passions and um, doing programs that they're excited about. 
Um, we have something at Cedar Crest. We have three guarantees. Um, the first guarantee that we have is that we have a four year um, guarantee to our students that we're going to make sure you graduate on time. Um, so if something happens and you accidentally take a class out of sequence um, and your advisor had advised you um, to do that, then we will pay for any kind of extra classes that you need to get up back on track. So we really want to make sure our students are getting the most out of their education. We also have something called the Lehigh Valley Association of Independent Colleges, which is um, these six other colleges um, on the slide. And we really try to use those colleges as resources and they use us as resource. So we, our students can take classes at their college and then also um, their students can take classes at our college. So it allows for a little bit of a broader social life. Um, and it also um, just allows for um, students to maybe pick up a minor in something they're interested in that they couldn't get at Cedar Crest um, or vice versa. We do have um, NCAA Division Three Athletics. Um, so if you definitely, if you're interested in a Cedar Crest Athletics, um, reach out to one of our coaches. Um, and then we have a vibrant student life on campus um, with over 50 clubs and organizations as well. Um, one of the things that makes Cedar Crest unique is we have a guaranteed study abroad experience. So we call it our sophomore expedition. All of our sophomores, um, as long as they have done their requirements, um, get to go on this trip fully funded by the college. So your freshman year, you find out where you're going. Our freshmen this year found out they're going to Morocco. Um, and every class has a different trip that's funded by the college, um, which is a really um, great way for our class to um, kind of see the world, experience new experience, and also do that with their peers. Um, so that's um, an awesome opportunity that we have as well. We also have guaranteed student employment. So when you come to Cedar Crest, if you want a job, um, we're gonna make sure you get a job. We have jobs across campus. So you'll definitely um, have to find one that you're interested in. Um, we also have our merit scholarships. So all of our students who are accepted to Cedar Crest get between 17,000 and $22,000 a year. Um, and that is reviewed at the time of your application. Um, and then we have something called the STAR program, which is how we make our private school tuition accessible to students at a public school price. Um, for example, we picked Pennsylvania. Um, so if you're a student from Pennsylvania and you have above a 3.5 in weighted GPA and you get into Cedar Crest, um, you will automatically qualify for our STAR program. So that'll take down your tuition from a $42,000 a year down to 14. So um, we really try to make sure since they're getting the best financial aid possible. Um, the price will depend on the state that you live in, the flagship institution um, in your state. So for Pennsylvania, it's about 14,000, but for other schools, it varies a little bit. So it could be a little bit more or it could be quite a bit less. So definitely depends on where you're coming from. Um, and then for Cedar Crest application process, we are rolling admissions. So um, you can apply to Cedar Crest anytime throughout your senior year um, and we'll work with you to get your application complete. Um, and then those are the requirements. So that is a little bit about Cedar Crest. If you have any other questions, feel free to send them in the Q&A um, or you can reach out to me um, and my contact information is on the slide. All right, Faith, perfect. Thanks so much uh, for sharing all that. Um, right on time and um, uh, very appropriate. Thanks so much. So um, Drexel is up next. And so that would be Abigail. Um, there you are. And um, I, I'm going to just pass the baton to you. So off you go. Great. Thank you. I'll go ahead and share my screen.
Great. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for being here today. My name is Abby, and I'm an admissions counselor on the undergraduate team. And I'm also your admissions representative for upstate New York. So if you have any questions at any point in time, um, please feel free to reach out to me, and I'll be happy to speak with you about Drexel in further detail. So just a little bit of background about the university. We are a tier one research institution located in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And we have over 14,000 undergraduate students. So we are a good sized university with lots of different majors to choose from, a large library to study in, lots of different clubs and activities to get involved in. But you'll see here that we do have a student faculty ratio of 11 to one. So you really get the best of both worlds in terms of size at Drexel. Our students are also coming from all over the country and all over the world, currently representing 47 states and 122 countries. Um, and this wide um, diversity of students can be a great benefit when it comes time to find a job after graduation. You'll be joining a robust widespread alumni network um, or a co-op position as a current student. At Drexel, you can gain six to 18 months of work experience while you're still in school through the co-op program. So as the last slide indicated, Drexel has over 80 majors across 13 different schools, spanning a variety of um, topics from biomedical engineering to interior design. So it's really meant to be interdisciplinary. If you're interested in double majoring or majoring in one school and minoring in another, you can certainly do that. In addition to our major offerings, we also have 120 minors, as well as a number of accelerated degrees to choose from. Accelerated degrees are a great option if you already know that you are interested in pursuing graduate school because it allows you to gain your undergrad and graduate in a shorter amount of time. So Drexel is really all about experiential education, which means combining what you learn in the classroom with real world hands on work experience to really create a well rounded education. And this can look at um, in a number of different shapes and sizes, depending on what you're studying at Drexel. If you're interested in fashion design, you may be interested in getting involved in our annual Westfall Fashion Show, which takes place at the Urban Outfitters headquarters right in Philadelphia every year. If you're interested in nursing or health professions, you may be interested in the fact that we actually bring in highly trained patient actors to work with our nursing students. There's a whole makeup studio that they go through to really simulate as lifelike as possible for our students what it's like to diagnose and have clinical conversations with those patients. And our students are getting involved in all of these different activities that you see here across all different majors. At Drexel, we believe that your major shouldn't define what you can do. We've had students start their own companies through the Biota Institute, which will give students funding to bring their startup ideas to life. As I mentioned at the beginning, we are a tier one research institution and you can get involved in research as early as the first year, um, the summer after your first year through the STAR program. And STAR stands for Students Tackling Advanced Research. You'll get to live on campus that first summer and conduct research alongside a professor and earn a stipend for participating in that research. We also have study abroad programs all over the world. Um, you can go abroad for up to six months on our quarter system or abroad for seven to 10 days through our intensive courses abroad. We also have a number of performing arts ensembles and you don't have to be in a, in a performing arts major to get involved. So as I mentioned briefly, the co-op program is a really integral part of the Drexel experience. You're able to gain six or 18 months of professional work experience while you're still in school, giving you a chance to build up your resume and cultivate all this great work experience so that when it comes time to graduate from college, you really have a competitive resume coming right out of the gate. In addition to cultivating your resume, about 80% of co-op positions are paid positions and the average co-op salary is between 18 and $19,000. So it's an excellent opportunity to earn some money while you're still in school. These are a couple examples of what students have done on their co-op. Um, in addition, just to give you an idea of what our students are doing, we had a student who was in our photography major who went and worked for Saturday Night Live. Um, taking photographs of the guests that were on the show to promote them. So she was able to put on her resume that she had taken photographs of celebrities like Jimmy Fallon and Justin Timberlake. 
If you're interested in research or health professions, you may go work and work in a research lab for six months or perhaps a hospital in the city of Philadelphia. There's no limit to where you can go um, on your co-op. A little bit about um, life in Philadelphia and at, as a Drexel student, Drexel is division one athletics and we also have club and intramural sports as well. We have over 350 student organizations to get involved in, so something for everyone. And you get a nice balance of campus and city life at Drexel. You can apply to Drexel through the common application or the coalition application, and we operate on a holistic review meaning that we'll take into consideration all aspects of your application to get a sense of who you are as an applicant and how you'll contribute to the Drexel community. Important to note that we will be test optional for the next two years. We know that it's been difficult to take those standardized tests due to the pandemic. You can apply to Drexel through the early action application, early decision application, or regular decision application. In addition to your standard application materials, we strongly encourage students to submit the CSS profile and the FAFSA to be considered for as much financial aid as possible. These are some ways you can learn more about Drexel. The admissions blog has some great pieces written by our staff and admissions about navigating the application process. We're on all the different social media platforms and our paper clip has some really great stories about what our students and faculty are up to. And this is my contact information, so please feel free to contact me via email or put any questions into the chat box and I'll be happy to speak with you. Okay, thanks for wrapping up quickly there. Um, uh, Daryl from, uh, from East Strasburg University, you're up next. I'm going to just pass the baton over to you. Hi, everybody. My name is Daryl Burley. I'm an assistant director of admissions uh, here at East Stroudsburg University. Um, we're considered a medium sized school uh, with just about 6,000 students. It puts us on the small side of a medium school. Um, I actually went to ESU. I love the fact that it was big enough where the campus is always alive. Students are always coming and going, yet it's small enough where you get individual attention. Uh, and smaller class size. We have a diverse student body from 26 states and 19 countries, as well as a diverse academic portfolio, which is great, allows you to specialize by combining majors, minors, and certificates. 58 different undergraduate degree programs, 21 master's programs, uh, several five-year accelerated programs. Uh, we also have two doctoral programs as well. Uh, we're constantly adding new state-of-the-art technology to make sure uh, all of our students are um, best equipped for uh, their career. Here you see pictured the Anatomage Virtual 3D Dissection Table. Uh, this is great for students in health sciences, uh, nursing, athletic training, uh, exercise science. We also have a uh, Sports Performance Institute and the Human Performance Lab, uh, all fully equipped with the latest state-of-the-art technology. Uh, also, we have a very strong um, business program with our entre Entrepreneurial Leadership Center. Uh, a lot of students have started businesses here, and the great thing is you don't have to be a business student to do so. Uh, any major can do it. All you need is a great idea. We'll come up with the uh, office space and the grant funding. Uh, a couple of years ago, we added the Bloomberg Finance Lab, which is the way that financial professionals worldwide access the stock markets. And again, any student can get their Bloomberg certificate. Uh, the 3D printing lab, we were one of the first in the country alongside NYU and Columbia to have a Stratasys printing lab. We stayed on the cutting edge of 3D printing. Um, we also have study abroad uh, locations all over the globe. Um, we're nicely located right here in the heart of the Pocono Mountains. Uh, a ton of stuff to do in the area, but also close to some major markets for uh, internship opportunities between New York and Philadelphia. Uh, warrior life is uh, its fantastic. I really like the fact that uh, even as a freshman, you get to choose what type of residence hall is best for you. Um, right here pictured is one of our suite style residence halls. Uh, here is the lounge inside one of our traditional style residence halls. Uh, so regardless of um, you know, what your preference is, you get to choose what's right for you. We have over 110 different uh, student run clubs and organizations, including clubs for every academic major. Uh, we have uh, sororities, fraternities, um, club sports, esports, um, pretty much something for everybody. Um, great options for eating throughout campus, including a Starbucks and Barnes and Noble bookstore. Uh, we're really uh, continuing to add 
uh, all the supports to make sure the students are successful, not only academically, but really in, uh, um, you know, come overall. So our career services um, are, you know, at your service, OASIS for students who have any type of physical or learning disability. The uh, new student mentorship program is like having a, a tour guide for your freshman year. Um, counseling and psychological services, uh, and the list goes on. So we continue to build this out just to make sure that there's really no need left unmet uh, as a, an ESU student. NCAA Division II sports, we also have uh, 10 club sports and a variety of intramural sports, so you can get involved at whatever level is right for you. Uh, the internship program, uh, it's uh, almost limitless. We have students um, going uh, all around the region. Um, you, see, you see here listed some well-known names, Disney, Nike, Merck, the UN, Sanofi, Pasteur, and Gatorade, uh, just to name a few. Applying to ESU is pretty simple. We really just need you to submit the application on our website and then send us your uh, high school transcript. We don't require letters of recommendation or an essay, but if you send them, we will um, use that as part of the evaluation. We are mostly test optional um, with the exception of a few majors, uh, which would be nursing, um, computer science, computer security, pre-med, pre-physical therapy. Um, financially, um, we're one of the few institutions that I know of that guarantees a locked tuition rate for all four years. So whatever the tuition is as a freshman, you're guaranteed that that rate will not increase for four years, which is nice to uh, for financial planning, just knowing that there are no surprise bumps along the way. Um, once you decide that uh, ESU uh, is for you, um, you will uh, instantly get access to your ESU email. We'll connect you with faculty. Uh, we've got numbers, a number of opportunities to visit uh, throughout the year. Um, we're continuing with virtual and also in-person visits daily. Um, so the, you know, the important part is we want to connect you with our current students um, to make sure that you know, you're able to um, you know, learn what student life is like, also connecting you with your faculty members so you can learn about the different internship opportunities uh, and programs available. Um, the surrounding area is, as I said, fantastic. So there's always something to do on campus, but we are just minutes away from year round resorts, uh, ski, you know, if you wanna go skiing, hiking, kayaking, skydiving, uh, you know, those are all right in the surrounding area. And it's a nice balance between you know, we're close to the cities, uh, but we're, um, you know, in a really nice uh, kind of community. So you really have access to um, all of those things. Um, so again, this here is my uh, contact information. Um, you know, feel free to reach out uh, with any questions. Uh, I'd be happy to, you know, connect on an individual basis. Um, and um, that's all. Thank you very much. All right, Daryl, thanks, thanks. Um, so for uh, our, uh, our audience on the other side, I just wanna remind you about the chat feature. The Q&A is live and uh, don't want you to forget that you can actually present your question directly to the panelists that you see in front of you. So um, next up is Mary Wood University and I think Christina, you are our presenter. So um, off you go. Hello everyone, um, my name is Tina Men, and I am from Marywood University. Um, alongside me today, I have Nicolette Bordell. Um, we are both admissions counselors, so please feel free to ask us any questions that you might have. A little bit about Marywood. We are a small liberal arts Catholic university located in Northeastern Pennsylvania. We have about 1900 undergraduate students um, and our, so that keeps our class sizes fairly small. You'll see about 30 to 35 students in our liberal arts courses and about 20 to 25 students in your major specific courses. So it keeps our student to faculty ratio about 12 to one. And I love to always point out to our students that about 99.7% of the class of 2019 is employed or currently pursuing graduate studies. We are also considered a day one institution. So that just means that you are going to start in your major from the first day that you step on campus. A few examples of that are like our architecture students will begin in design studios the first semester of freshman year. Education students, same thing. They're gonna start observations first semester of freshman year. Um, nursing students can get into the simulation lab their first year. And then obviously um, nutrition starts cooking and TV and radio broadcasts will start using the equipment and running stations within the first year. 
a little bit about student life on campus. Um, there's over 100 different clubs and organizations to get involved in, anything from departmental, um, athletics and recreation, um, faith and service, student government, um, campus ministry, um, get involved in orientation, um, tons of different opportunities there. And we also like to point out that our student activities office was placed first in excellence and programming at a national at the National Association of Campus Activities Conference. Um, and they put on some really great activities for all of our students. Um, one of our more popular um, programs that they run is actually bingo. Everybody laughs when I say it, but they give away some really awesome prizes, um, anywhere from Apple watches, TVs, cash prizes, they've done airline tickets, you can think of it, they, they've done it for this type of event. Um, so they try and make sure to plan stuff on campus all the time, as well as planning some off campus trips as well. Um, they'll do anything from taking trips to New York, which is only about a two hour drive north or to Philadelphia, which is about two hours south. Um, so they make sure to, to plan something for everyone to get involved in. A couple of other things to do off campus. Um, we are located in a residential area of Scranton um, and just about five minutes away, you can go to the downtown area in the city square where you're going to find a lot of mom and pop type of shops, um, various different types of boutiques and cafes. Um, and then about 10 minutes away, you'll see Dixon City, which is the shopping district where you're going to find um, the Viewmont Mall, as well as various different chain stores and restaurants. We also have Montage Mountain, which is about 15 minutes away, where you'll find the ski resort, um, more shopping and dining, a concert venue, and it's the location of our Scranton Wilkes-Barre Rare Riders, which is our Triple A team to the New York Yankees. Um, so tons of different opportunities to um, explore the area, um, various different hiking, um, biking, all kinds of things that you can do outside as well. A little bit about our athletics. Um, we are NCAA Division III and a member of the Atlantic East Conference. We have over 22 different varsity teams that you can get involved in. I always like to point out to students that Division III school in terms of sports just means that you have a really great balance between your academics as well as your athletics. They do a very great job about making sure that you have plenty of time to handle all of your studies as well as still be a part of something that you've been passionate about probably majority of your life. So if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. And the important things that I'm sure everybody um, wants to know is usually the admissions process. We are rolling admissions, so we do not have any particular set deadlines. So you can apply whenever you're ready. Um, you can use the Common application or the Marywood application. Um, both are located on our website. And as long as you submit the application online, it is free. And then we just need a few items to complete the application. Your official high school transcript, Official test scores, um, whether that's SAT or ACT, we are currently test optional for the fall 2021 semester. So if you opt out to sending in your test scores, you do not have to submit those. As far as for fall 2022, um, that has not been decided yet. So we just like to make sure we let you know if we do go um, test required, we do need the official scores. And then we also ask for a letter of recommendation. Once we have all of those items, it only takes about seven to 10 business days um, to hear back from us. So we wanna make sure that we're getting you a decision as soon as possible. Some information in regards to scholarships and financial aid, about 75% of our incoming freshmen will be awarded a scholarship worth more than half of their tuition. Um, so that means you can get anywhere between $16,000 to $23,000 per year based on one of our merit scholarships. That also um, is not something that you have to apply separately for. So all you have to do is apply for admission and you will be considered for a merit-based award. Some other scholarships that we do offer, um, Max's Gillet, which can be up to $2,500 annually. Um, that's for outstanding community service and then various different talent awards for students in fine arts or music. If you're interested in getting to know more about Marywood, we are doing in-person campus tours and visits. We also have various different opportunities virtually and we're on Instagram daily at 4 p.m. So if you have questions, you can find us there or contact us at any point in time and hopefully we'll see you on campus. Christina, thank you so much. Um, I'm gonna just go ahead right to our next presenter and that's Danielle um, from, uh, from Mercyhurst University. So off you go. 
All right. Good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for joining today. My name is Danielle Vaccaro. I am one of the admissions counselors at Mercyhurst University in Erie, Pennsylvania. Just to get started, I'll tell you a little bit about us. We are going to move to the other side of Pennsylvania. We are on the western side. We're about an hour and a half from Buffalo, and we are located in Erie, like I said. Erie is the halfway point between Buffalo, Cleveland, and Pittsburgh. So you're a small city in between three larger cities. We are a small private Catholic liberal arts university. Uh, on the right hand side, you can see a photo of our campus. That pretty much is the entirety of our campus that you see there. Uh, we have around 3,100 undergraduate students. We also have about three to 400 graduate students, both participating in courses on campus and remotely. So we have a wide variety of students working with us from all over the place. We also have students from 43 states and 54 countries. So we are a very diverse campus when it comes to our student body. In terms of academic programs, we have over 100 different areas of study. Our curriculum is meant to be very flexible for students. So not only can you pick up multiple majors or multiple minors, you can also do things like study abroad during your semesters while you're on campus or pursue a partnership program such as a three plus three or a four plus one. We offer all types of programs like that for students. Um, with our study abroad opportunities, since I just mentioned that, one in four of our students study abroad, you can do smaller options such as a two week study abroad experience after a class is completed in the semester. You could also go for half a semester to our campus in Dungarvan, Ireland. You'll stay on campus, you'll eat in a resident eat in a dining hall, sleep in a residence hall. You just do it in Ireland, which is really great. Um, like I said, we have over 100 different areas of study on campus, but we do have some programs that really do stand out for us. And they're all listed on the right-hand side. These are programs that we're known for nationwide. They either have the support and recognition from the federal government or from national agencies that our students have gone on to, or they are unique in that there aren't too many programs out there like what we offer. So um, those are just a few of them. We have a full list of all of our academic programs as well as graduate program offerings on our website, which is listed in the bottom left, mercyhurst.edu slash academics. And if you go to that website, you can actually click on each of the programs that are offered and read up a little bit up on what each of the programs offers as well as hands-on experiences and opportunities for you in terms of internships and uh, career opportunities. In terms of student life, there are six different dining facilities on campus. Each one of them is more delicious than the next. Um, one new initiative that we've done for students this year that we'll be continuing is that we're offering unlimited meal plans for students for all four years. So we want to make sure that students don't have to worry about where their next meal is coming from which is why we're offering this option for students. In terms of residence life, the other big part of what happens when you're living on campus, we have three freshman residence halls. One is a co-ed residence hall, one is all male, one is all female. Moving into your upperclassmen years, you'll move into apartment style housing or in a uh, suite style residence hall if you're a sophomore. Uh, we have a four-year residency requirement. So as part of that, our housing model is a developmental model. So you'll gain independence in your housing as you move throughout your time at Mercyhurst. And there's a lot of ways that you can get involved on campus. We have a number of different performing arts opportunities. Erie, Mercyhurst is a big cultural center in the city of Erie. So we bring in a lot of large-scale performances our Mercyhurst Institute for Arts and Culture has brought in Broadway performers, uh, actors, actresses, uh, guest speakers of all kinds. So there's a lot of ways that we expose our students to the world around us. In terms of athletics, we are division two for the majority of our sports. We are division one in men and women's ice hockey. So you'll see some different competitors for our ice hockey teams. One in four of our students are student athletes. So we have a very supportive campus for anybody who is looking to play a sport. If you're not interested in playing a sport at the division one or division two level, we do have over a hundred recognized student clubs and organizations. Some of those are sports. Some of them are activities that you can participate in. The clubs range in 
a wide variety of areas such as Pokemon Go Club. It's one of our more popular clubs on campus. We also have cybersecurity club. We have a business club. We have Habitat for Humanity. There's a lot of ways that you can get involved on campus and you know, stay busy during your time at Mercyhurst. So in terms of the application, I'll go over this very briefly. We are on a rolling admission cycle, which means you can apply pretty much whenever you're ready to do so. Uh, our application is listed online and you can apply one of two ways, through the Mercyhurst application, which is on our website, or the common application. And with your application materials, there's a couple of items that we'll need. We'll need a copy of your high school transcript, a writing sample, at least one letter of recommendation. Most students will submit about two or three, and then either your SAT or ACT scores or notification that you'd like to be a test optional student. We are, we've been test optional for about six years now, and we plan to remain that way in the future. So if you're unable to take your tests or if you don't feel confident in your scores, you do not have to send them in. Just notify your admissions counselor, which would be myself, and let me know so I can waive that requirement for you. This is just a general student profile so you can see what a typical student at Mercyhurst looks like. Typically, they come in with a 3.4 GPA, 1070 SAT, and a 23 ACT. If you don't quite meet these benchmarks, don't worry too much. We take a very holistic approach to reviewing applications. So if you show improvement in your grades, if you, you know, are staying involved while at the same time maintaining a solid GPA. We take all of those things into consideration as we're reviewing applications. All right, Danielle, we've got a pause right there. I'm uh, sorry to cut you off, but um, we've got to go to our next presenter. Uh, okay. So um, you can put your information in the chat and they can get a hold of you there. Okay, thank you. Yep, thank you. All right, so um, our uh, next presenter to round this out tonight is Yvonne from Penn State University. And I am gonna just uh, hand, uh, hand the screen over to her. All right, thank you, Earl. Uh, good evening, everybody. My name is Yvonne. So I'm an admissions counselor here from Happy Valley. So uh, we are right in the center of Pennsylvania, but we do have 20 campuses all over Pennsylvania. And if you're looking for one of those schools that provides you with the wealth of opportunity and this ginormous wealth of um, alumni support, uh, definitely think of Penn State. We are a top 1% world-class university. We were ranked number 18 nationally, according to the US News and World Report for best colleges in 2020. Uh, we're a large, large university, 70,000 undergraduate students across 20 campuses all over Pennsylvania. And we're very, very proud to say that we have a 16 to 1 faculty to student ratio. Our graduation rate is about 85%, and that is about 25% above our national average. And our retention rate is about 93%, and that is 12% above our national average. I feel like these are great numbers, a true testament of the fact that uh, students are happy, they're engaged, and they're successful here at Penn State. Uh, we're a globally recognized university and setting up our students for success. And one of the ways that we do that is by having a, a very renowned career services um, Career Services Center here at Penn State. Um, so we are able to host one of the largest career fairs east of the Mississippi River. Uh, we do that during the spring and during the fall, bringing over 4,500 employers. We also have something that's called the NittanyLineCareer.com, which is a single uh, system platform, recruitment platform that's connecting our alums, connecting the employers, connecting our students into one platform. And we have a lot, a lot of wonderful success from that. And our academic colleges and departments have its own career resources and employer relations office. So furthermore, developing more of that dedicated support for our students. We offer over 300 plus study abroad programs. You guys, we're on every single continent except Antarctica. Uh, we have study abroad programs that are available for entire academic year. We have semester long programs, we have faculty led programs, we have courses that have an embedded uh, study abroad component to it. So uh, whatever it is that you're looking for, you know, whether it's being an exchange student, whether it's uh, you know, a shorter coursework, um, it is all possible here at Penn State. And last year we were able to bring in over $1 billion in annual research expenditures and Penn State is ranked the top 25 research universities. And we're the one of the only three institutions in our nation that's accorded the land sea space grant status. So which means that students can get involved in research as early as your first year here. 
We have over at Penn State about 344 research units. And within those 344 research units, we have about 68 centers and 14 inter interdisciplinary uh, research institutes. So yeah, definitely this is one of those ways that you can make, a, uh, make those special friendships and make a big university feel smaller. And one of those things that's very, very unique about Penn State and also confusing for a lot of students when they're applying to Penn State is the fact that we have 20 campuses all over Pennsylvania. And from this map here, you can see all of our 20 campuses. And I myself, I'm from the University Park campus. I do have a colleague here with me that's answering um, uh, questions as well. If you guys have any questions through the Q&A, his name is Donovan. And he is from our Harrisburg campus. So people say, what are the differences between all these campuses? Well, it's the size. So University Park, there's 46,000 undergraduate students. And um, all of the other campuses ranges anywhere from about 500 to about 5,000 students. So that is going to be the biggest difference. However, it does not matter where you start, where you finish. You are ultimately going to have that one Penn State degree, one diploma, one transcript. So uh, we are ultimately all one Penn State. Redmond Monopoly housing here indicates that students must live on campus their first year at these campuses. Orange Monopoly housing means that there is on-campus housing, but it's optional whether or not students want to live on campus. And the ones without any Monopoly housing simply means that there is no on-campus housing at those uh, locations. So one thing that is very, very cool about Penn State is the fact that we have 275 academic programs. So no matter what your career, future aspirations is, there is going to be something here for you at Penn State. So, uh, but definitely on your application to keep in mind that we do have some uh, majors that are dictating which campus that you can select that from. And again, it, and, and that's what uh, our position comes in place. So definitely try to reach out to one of us for advice if you need help in identifying what those academic programs of your interest is. We have 12 academic colleges. So from College of Nursing, Arts and Architecture, all of the STEM colleges to um, a college of um, to our college of um, earth mineral sciences and um, so there's a, there's a really really wa wide broad range of, of that and I can give you an example about students that want to do pre medicine uh, they could go into our Everly College of Science for pre medicine uh, they could also go into our College of Agricultural Sciences for immunology infectious disease pharmacology toxicology uh, they could also go into our College of Health and Human Development for bio and behavioral health so there's really really a wide array of uh, selections for you here at Penn State. Um, so one thing that's really unique about us is the fact that we have 1,200 clubs and organizations, 900 of those are at the University Park campus. This particular photo is our Penn State Thon, which is the world's largest student-ran philanthropies in the world. In the midst of this pandemic, even though this year we were still able to raise over $10 million for a fighting pediatric cancer. And it concludes in this 46 hour nonstop dance marathon that happens every February in our Bryce Jordan Center. Um, and Penn State fosters diversity and inclusion. 22% of our student population is diverse. And we were named one of the top 40 uh, LGBTQ friendly universities for 2020. So we just have a huge commitment in, um, in supporting our students. So I'm just gonna go ahead and, um, you know, show my last slide since I'm running out of time. Uh, if you guys have any questions, feel free to reach out to admissions at psu.edu. And you can always visit our admissions at psu.edu slash experience page to uh, be involved in any of our virtual programs. Thank you. All right, excellent. Um, actually, I'm, I'm Looking at the time here, um, I do want to just bring everybody back to uh, to the session. Um, if we could just come back on screen, um, looking at our time, we may not be able to do a, a quick round robin, and and that's fine because uh, most importantly, um, they're hearing from each school, and um, you all did a great job at presenting your institution. So. Um, uh, I want to just uh, uh, share our closing slide here. Um, I believe, there you go. Oh, there it is. Okay, so again, thank you, each and every one of our presenters um, from Cedar Crest, um, Drexel, East Strasburg U, Mary Wood, Mercy Hurst, and Penn State University. You all did a great job tonight. Um, Folks on the other side who are watching this particular webinar, um, 
as you close out of this particular session, you will have a four question survey that we ask you to complete. Um, that just makes our program and our process even better. Um, I do encourage you to sign up for more sessions if you have interest in other universities. And again, because this is being recorded, you will have uh, an opportunity to view this particular session at strivescan.com backslash uh, uh, cast, cast dud N A N Y. Sorry, New York. Sorry. Um, all right. Let me stop sharing this screen and we're going to come back to our gallery view, which I have, I believe, everybody on screen. So we're just going to do a quick wave goodbye. And um, we thank everybody on the other side for joining us. Thanks, guys. Have a great evening. We really appreciate you joining us. Bye-bye.